In conjunction with the 50th year anniversary of the Title IX legislation, welcome to North Florida Athletics' Talking Title IX series, where we interview current and former UNF student athletes and staff on the influence of college athletics in their lives and the ongoing impact made by Title IX. Enjoy. We're here, special guest Navia Penrod today. We're going to be able to talk with her about her career uh, as a one of the best UNF softball student athletes in program history now is a teacher uh, in elementary education and we're going to discuss Title IX and uh, her experiences with uh, being a student athlete and just talking about softball and the opportunities for women in sports. Uh, thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. All right for the people that don't know you uh, a lot of current you know players and student athletes and, and administration know you very well, but uh, give you give, give yourself an introduction. Uh, my name is Navia Penrod. Um, I attended UNF from the fall of 2015 to the spring of 2019. There I played softball. Um, I studied special education and currently I am a special education teacher at the elementary level in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, so we were talking a little bit about that off of off the air. Uh, what's that experience been like for you so far since you graduated and taking on this job during COVID and post COVID, so to speak? Yeah. So taking on the job during COVID was a little challenging. Um, I moved up here kind of blind. I found my apartment online. I wasn't able to visit it. Um, interviews were all virtual. Um, and I did my first year of teaching almost completely virtually. So that brought its own challenges. Um, I feel like it has also kind of expanded my horizons. Um, I'm a lot better at everything technology. <laughs> um, and then my second year of teaching was completely in person. So I kind of got two first years of teaching, um, much different experiences, but I absolutely adore it. Um, it's challenging in its own ways, but it's extremely rewarding. Um, and I've definitely found my niche in this world outside of softball and post softball. Yeah, that's great. I'm sure it's uh, that's probably one of the most nerve wracking parts of transitioning from being that student athlete is kind of creating that foothold for yourself uh, in the career world or whatever that next step is. And to have that out of the way uh, for now is is a good feeling. Where obviously you're in Georgia now, but uh, just for for the viewers, where are you from? Um, you know, yeah. was UNF? You know, go into how you selected UNF. Yes. So I am from Naples, Florida. So if you guys don't know, that's very, very south, southwest Florida. Um, picking UNF, I knew I wanted to stay in Florida. Um, I do not like the cold. <laughs> um, didn't want to leave Florida. Wanted to be close enough where my grandparents could visit. Um, so that fit the realm for UNF. Um, but what really sold me was UNF, some special education program. I did my research and the program was amazing. Um, and I knew that that program would really mold me into what I needed to be to be a, a great teacher um, one day. And then softball, of course, put it over the edge. Coach Marcy um, was awesome. I came for a couple of visits and immediately when I stepped foot on campus, I loved it. It's such a beautiful campus. Um, it's not too big. It's not too small. Um, it just felt like home when I stepped foot there. So it was perfect all around for me. Great. So we'll go back a little bit further than that even. Uh, you know, obviously, we're were standout softball player names all across the record books when did you start playing softball and then were there any other sports that you were you know heavy into growing up yes so my grandparents actually they raised me they had me involved in just about everything from soccer to ballet <laughs> growing up so i was always involved in sports um in athletics growing up my grandpa however got me involved with softball. He bought my first glove for me and just had me out in the yard playing and throwing every day around six years old, I want to say. And he saw something in me um, and decided to sign me up for Little League at nine years old. And from there, it was really a wrap. So I kind of owe it all to him. <laughs> sure. So growing up, um, I know for, for me, even as a baseball player, I watched a lot of softball um, as much as it was streamed on ESPN and ABC, uh, Natasha Watley, remember her playing Justin McIndo Jessica Mendoza, you know, Jenny Finch, Kat Osterman, uh, Crystal Bustos, a lot of those names. Um, and then in my area, there's 
pretty well-known stadium in Rosemont, Illinois now where there's professional softball. I remember it being big, but it's obviously grown a lot since then for you. Um, up and coming, were there any softball, you know, players in college or in professional ranks that you watched and were inspired by? Yes. So I think the person that I was inspired by most is Michelle Moultrie. Um, her story as a walk on and how big she got and how amazing, how hard she worked. And I think representation, seeing an African American woman um, in the sport, which was rare at that time, that really I was in love with her. Everything that she did, I wanted to watch Gator softball and um, followed her through her career. At that time, was that something that you thought, okay, obviously I'm inspired by at the time I'm playing youth softball, um, playing in high school. Was it a goal for you to play division one softball? Absolutely. <laughs> Watching it on TV and seeing it. Um, I'm like, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. I told my grandparents every day, that's what I want to do and kind of bought into the system and they bought into me and that's how it played out. Luckily for me. For, for, you know, I see all the time, obviously running in our social media accounts and seeing travel ball and players trying to, you know, put their name out or tag us and, and promote what they're doing. Obviously there's even more of an emphasis on getting to that next level now than there ever has been. Uh, you made it happen for yourself. What was something that you would say to, to up and coming softball players? Um, what, 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 what's the key to make that happen? Um, I think the key, well, it was for me, and I would say it would continue to be the key for them, would be to stay competitive. Um, it's easy to get caught up in the realm of focusing on yourself and wanting to go to the next level and um, just sending that out. But it, I think it's important to continue to play competitively and to not get too selfish, um, to still be team um, driven if that makes sense. I played for a very, very competitive um, team and our coach kind of instilled in us that this is still a team sport. I understand you all are trying to get recruited, um, and it, but it's easy to get caught up in that. So staying competitive and still doing it for the team um, and still, um, I would say working hard team-wise, you will get seen. Um, it's important to stay, stay team-driven. Sure. Was there... Were, were there any big, you know, hurdles that you had to overcome that were like, man, I don't know if it's going to be possible to be either seen or felt like I was getting the right competition or exposure to to make it to the next level to make Division One softball happen for yourself, especially, um, you know, I don't, you know, in certain, I don't know what yeah. softball was in Naples, but <laughs> yeah, they, exactly, softball wasn't. Um, too big in Naples. I think that was a hurdle in itself. Um, finding a competitive team and finding the right fit for me. Um, so, I mean, I drove eventually when I found the team that was my right fit, I drove two and a half hours of practice. <laughs> um, and that was the norm. So finding the right team was, was a challenge. Um, I tried out for different teams in different areas, Tampa, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Um, and as a child, you don't really see how much and how, how crazy that is but I mean my grandparents drove me back and forth um between work and between all their responsibilities as adults um and what they're paying for travel ball um that yeah my team was two and a half hours away so getting to practice was um an event it was a long drive um on the weekends I stayed with teammates um they housed me for the weekend um, so that was crazy. And then I guess another challenge for me was I tore my labrum, my rotator cuff, my biceps and all my, I believe, junior year, sophomore, mm -hmm. junior year um, of high school. So I was very fearsome. Um, I missed a lot of my high school season, missing travel ball. Um, I was like, how am I going to get back and be able to um, get recruited? But it all worked out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, two and a half hours today, you think about putting that type of uh, time commitment in your day to day, it's pretty, it's right. a pretty staggering amount of time. And not a lot of people will realize that, especially as you, as you watch games on ESPN today and um, see the front end product, you don't really see the back end of, of everything. Um, what, it, what had, what was being a, a student athlete like for you? And how much how much uh, of you is who you are because of that experience? 
I would say a lot of me <laughs> um, is who I am because of that experience. It was it was everything. Um, being a student athlete really molded me into to the woman I am today. It's paved the way for a lot of my successes today. Um, being a student athlete instilled in me qualities that I feel are the reason for my successes. You know, time management, discipline, um, responsibility, being punctual, um, detail oriented. There just there's just so many qualities. Um, that I gained and lessons that I had to learn as a student athlete um, that really are the reason for my successes today that really truly translate over into being successful in the real world um, and being a part of something bigger than myself I think was truly important um, and is something that will always be a part of me I'll always be some part of something bigger than myself um, within the school system as a teacher within the community um, within this country. Yeah. Other people at work or, you know, that you work with now, or even, um, maybe some, uh, peoples or people that, uh, you've taught or worked with that ask you about it or are curious about it. Yeah. My students are <laughs> hilarious. They, for some reason, Googled me and found UNF softball and they are so funny. They, <laughs> <laughs> will come up to me with pictures on their Chromebooks and videos of me playing and they think it's the coolest thing. Um, and because of me, they want to play sports. They want to play baseball at recess. They want to play softball. So that's awesome to see. Um, other people that I work with, um, it kind of, it puts puzzle pieces together for them. And they're like, ah, that's why you are the way you are. Um, competitive and driven and punctual. I'm always the first one there, last one to leave. And they're like, yeah, she played college sports. Um, so it, it, I think puzzle, it put the, puts the puzzle pieces together for a lot of people. Uh, so every year it seems like the, the viewership's numbers are, are um, new records are set for softball championships. Um, I know for myself watching the regionals and super regionals and you know obviously in, uh, in Oklahoma City uh, the the quality of the broadcasts are improving the amount of energy and time put into it um, there's more out there for for uh, you know just fans but also for uh, girls aspiring to play softball that there's more available how how much in your eyes has it changed even from when you were you know a youth softball player Oh my God, it's changed tremendously. When I was younger, I remember only seeing, you know, the games that were the big games, championships, um, and only seeing the teams that were, you know, the bigger teams. Um, so it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I can walk into a restaurant the past couple of weeks during postseason, and I'm walking into restaurants and seeing more TVs playing softball than any other sport. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I remember being younger and requesting softball to a waitress or waiter and them looking at me like, what, <laughs> what do you want to watch? So it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, exposure and coverage that it's getting and, and watching it grow is, it's, I love it. It's, it's amazing. It's important. What uh, what do you think uh, um, is the key element for that? Do you think there, you know, is it just people are enjoying the sport? Obviously, attendance has has risen a lot. Um, what what in your opinion was was a really a, a key driver in that? I think that a key driver, of course, was <laughs> how amazing the sport is. Um, people finally realizing it. Extended media coverage. Um, women's sports, I feel, is is amazing um, and something that we need to fight for. Um, I think that people are realizing that women, there need to be positive role models for women out there. I think that people are realizing that representation matters. Um, media coverage and overall exposure of women's sports is, it's a must in terms of growth, in terms of um, importance for the future generations. Um, representation is extremely important. What are, what are some of those um, those things that still need to be done in your opinion to help grow that exposure, whether it is for softball or, um, I know, I think women's soccer has been another one where there hasn't always been that consistency with, you know, broadcasting per se, or, right. um, you know, sports like that. What are some of those key things and, uh, other certain people that, um, you know, need to get involved to help promote them? Right. I think that exposure and representation just needs to continue to grow. 
Um, I'd like to see more games, more mid-major and low-major games um, covered. Um, I think representation in advertisements and um, things like that, sponsorships um, for women in sports is important um, for in terms of growth. I think that's the, the next step. Um, I think all of those things, representation, exposure, coverage, all equate to increased fans. Um, and I think that's what will grow the sport. That's pretty crazy. That's 50 years since Title IX started or was signed into to uh, as a bill in 1972, um, 50 years from now, you know, what do you think uh, some achievable goals in, in women's sports would be? Uh, it's kind of a loaded question, but yeah. uh, during, you know, the next at least decade, what, uh, what do you, what do you hope to see? Um, I hope to see professional women's sports um, be just as big as men's professional sports. Um, equal pay would be amazing. Um, opportunity would be amazing. I think that that's our next step is I think the profession at the professional level, the collegiate level, um, women and men's sports need to be equal. Kind of hashed this out earlier, but um, for people that are watching this or they have a daughter or um, a sister that's trying to come up in sports, uh, what's some advice that you would want to give them? My advice would be to always believe in yourself. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, there's, there's the opportunity is there, take advantage of it, seize it, um, work hard and never give up. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Navia, for making time. Uh, hopefully you can get a little bit of a respite from, uh, from the day to day in the summer and get ready for your next teaching year. Uh, <laughs> but it's good to catch up and uh, talk to you one of the greats at UNF softball. I know Osprey softball is very proud of you and uh, hopefully we'll continue to, to add to the program. Thank you.